again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week is the second in the short series of lessons on uh, harmonics for bass. And uh, this week we're going to look a little deeper into how we can use these natural harmonics. So last lesson we looked at how harmonics are created and how we can use them to tune the bass and create little riffs and lines just one note at a time. So now let's have a look at how we can use several harmonics together to create chords. First of all, we're going to look at what's often referred to as a double stop. Now that's basically two notes played together. So we can play a double stop with fretted notes like this, or just two notes together. But we can also play two harmonics together like this. Okay, so that again is a double stop. So first of all, let's just try playing two really simple harmonics together here at the 12th fret. So we'll play the D and the G string. So we're going to have a perfect fourth interval of D and G. Okay, so first just use uh, the first finger to bar across the D and the G string there. And use the first and the second finger of the plucking hand to pick the strings, just like that. So that's separate and together. So this is a really simple pattern to use because we're just using one finger to uh, play the notes at the same fret on just on different strings. So let's just try moving that bar pattern down the neck at the different node points uh, that we used in the last lesson. So we can try the 7th fret, or the 5th fret, 4th fret, 3rd fret, you know, and just keep going down there, okay? So you can just take that bar, okay, so that's an easy way of playing double stops there. So that was a very simple uh, finger bar shape, but we don't have to rely on a bar at all. We can actually pick out any harmonics we like and play them together. So here I'll just use the fifth fret of the D string there, and the fourth fret of the G string. Okay, so together. So I'm using the first finger for the G string there, fourth fret, and the second finger for the fifth fret on the D string. Or how about trying the fourth fret on the D string and the seventh fret on the G string there? So separately, okay. So we can obviously use more than two notes for these chords, so let's have a look at three note chords. So we could take the seventh fret there on the A string, and the fifth fret on the uh, D and G string. So all together, get that chord, or third fret of the A string, fifth fret of the D and G or 9th fret of the A and the D, and the 12th fret of the G string. And you might recognise that chord, it's a fairly, fairly dissonant chord there, from Portrait of Tracy by Jaco Pistorius. So any amount of uh, notes can be used for these chords, um, just bar straight across and have a 4 note chord there. So this opens up quite a few possibilities in terms of tonal combinations, but it gets even more interesting if we start to introduce fretted notes along with them. So uh, to get you started with this, we'll just try a really, really basic example. So first of all, I want you to fret the note D at the fifth fret of the A string. Okay, so just a basic D there. And uh, then we're going to play the harmonics at the seventh fret of the D and the G string. So those two together. So all together we have this chord. And when we uh, play this chord, uh, you'll notice that I'm playing the, the A string, the D there, with the thumb. And then I've got the first and second finger there, ready under the uh, D and the G string there, ready to play these notes. So at the start of that, I've got the chord here, ready. And then uh, I've got the thumb there, first finger and second finger all sat there, ready on the strings to pluck them. So I can play them all together that kind of motion, <laughs> or separate. This kind of claw hammer technique comes in really handy for playing, uh, well, just for normal chords. You know, so it's, um, I use this a lot, this, this kind of uh, technique, and you'll see anybody that plays chordly or any of these harmonics uh, type chords, you'll see them using this kind of technique. So that basic finger shape there gave us a, a D power chord, really, a D5. So we had the D, then we had an A and a D, so it's root, fifth, octave. But as we move that around, uh, that shape, we get a lot of different chords. OK, 
okay? So you can just take that pattern, just that finger shape there, and just move it. I mean, sometimes it won't work. <laughs> That's not a very good chord, but put it on the C, start it on the B there, G, G up there, E. And you'll find that some of these finger patterns, even though you might not know which harmonics you're playing at the time, they can, if you just experiment with them, you can find some fairly interesting tonal uh, possibilities. So now let's try something a little more sophisticated. What I want you to do is take a C here, fretted note, so third fret of the A string, and then we're going to take the uh, harmonics at the fifth fret, so this is the same pattern as we just used. Okay, so... And that gives us a C uh, add 9 chord, because we've got a D and a G there. Then I want you to come down on the 3rd fret of the G and the D string, like that. And when you do that, we get a C6-9 chord there. So we're coming up on the 5th fret harmonic and down on the 3rd fret harmonic. So for the fingering of this, I'm using the 1st finger to take the C, the fretted note. Then the 4th finger takes the 2 harmonics. Then when I come down, I'm using the second finger for the uh, third fret harmonics. So up the fifth fret harmonics and down the third fret. And that gives us this nice little uh, chordal sound. And even though I'm not playing them as straight block chords all at the same time, because the harmonics ring out like this, we actually get this nice layered effect. You know, so it's like a, it is a broken chord. Now, once you've played that C chord, I want you to then move down to the G. So, the fretted note, the G there, third fret of the E string. Okay? And then we're going to play a similar pattern. We're going to have the fifth fret harmonics there on the A and the D string. Which again gives us an add nine chord, because we've got an A there. But then when we get to the top, I want you to play the harmonic fourth fret of the G string. Which is the B, which is the major third get a nice add nine chord uh, again there. So if we put those two chords together, and we get this nice little riff. And uh, if you pay attention to the uh, fingering of the plucking hand, again, I'm just using the thumb for the fretted note, first and second finger for coming up there, then I'm using the first finger and second finger when I'm coming down. Although, there's no rules for this, obviously. You can use whatever feels comfortable. If you've just got that thumb, first and second finger there, you can even use the third finger there to play the G string again, and then the second finger as you come down. Then when I come up on from the G, thumb, first and second finger, and then third finger for the, for the B up there at the top. And the cool thing about this C and G down here is that a lot of these harmonics down in this lower area work with them really well. So you can get some really nice sounds and you can just mess around with them to your heart's content. So if we play that C... G... anything at all, just move around trying to hit those harmonics. It can be quite tough at first when you first try doing it because you've got to move the fingers around in such a confined space, so it might take a little bit getting the independence with the fingers and also getting a little bit of uh, uh, practice with this hand because you know it's, it's just not going to feel comfortable if you've never tried that kind of claw hammer technique before. But if you persevere, just practice around playing these little chords there, just trying to get nice little, uh, nice little sounds out of it, and uh, you'll soon get it. Another good thing you can do in this area is, uh, is practice keeping the harmonics the same and just moving the bass note around. So if we take that C there again, fifth fret harmonics, the D and the G there, and then if I just move the bass note around, you know, you can get some nice sounds like that. Go down to the B. So, as you can see, I'm keeping those two harmonics the same, 
and just moving the hand around. You obviously have to uh, shift position quite a bit to keep that uh, keep that going. You don't just keep the fourth finger there on the harmonics. Uh, you have to change over to the first finger and the second finger. So if I'm on the C there and I want to move up to the D, the D's uh, I'm taking the D with the first finger and then I'm using the second and third fingers for the harmonics. Then I might take the third finger for the E there, the first finger for the harmonics, fourth finger for the F there, first finger for the harmonics. Then if I wanted to take the B, I can keep that finger in there. I've got the first finger, a bit of a stretch there to get those. Okay. Now finally, let's have a look at some basic chords by chord name that you can apply in your general playing. And I'll just run through the uh, basic major shapes for each uh, natural note of C, D, E, F, G, A and B. Uh, that way you can use them uh, in or at the end of songs for a little bit of flavour. Um, so let's say that you're in uh, uh, the key of D and the, uh, the song had just finished. You know, you can put that little chord in there and uh, that can sound quite nice. Uh, people like Jacob Astorius really, really put these chords into their general style of playing. You can hear him playing them all the time, you know, in walking bass lines and everything. Uh, but um, if you're quite sparse with them, they can be just quite nice at the end of a tune. So for the first chord of C major, we're going to use the same voicing that we've already looked at. That's the C there, fretted note, third fret of the A string, and harmonics on the fifth fret of the D and G string. And that's a C add nine chord. So that works with the C major. So, okay. For a D major chord, we can play the D there, fretted note on the A string there, fifth fret, uh, with the third finger, and then we can play the harmonic there at the fourth fret of the D string and the harmonic at the third fret of the G string. So fourth fret harmonic D string, third fret harmonic G string. And that gives us a D major because we have there an F sharp and a D. So there's no fifth in there, but that doesn't matter. We've got that third there with the F sharp. So that gives us a C major and D major. For an E major chord, we can use the same pattern that we used for the C major, for the C add nine here, which gives us an E add nine. So we've got the uh, E there, seventh fret of the A string played with the first finger. Then we've got the ninth fret there on the D and the G string with the fourth finger. For an F major chord, we can take the F here, eighth fret of the A string with the fourth finger. Then we take the seventh fret of the D string here with the third finger and then the fifth fret of the G string with the first finger. And that gives us an F add nine chord. So there's a lot of add nine chords here. So, okay. There are loads of uh, G possibilities, but we'll uh, go for this one here at the third fret uh, of the E string there. And then we've got the fifth fret on the D string for the harmonic, and then another harmonic there, fourth fret of the G string. Okay? And that's a G, a straight G major chord. For an A major, we can take the A here at the fifth fret of the E string with the second finger, and then play the fourth fret there, harmonic on the A string, and then the harmonic at the seventh fret of the D string. So 5th fret E string, then harmonics 4th fret A string, and 7th fret D string. And I'm using the 2nd finger for the A, 1st finger for that 1st harmonic there, and the 4th finger for the next harmonic on the D string. That's an A major, straight A major. Lastly, for the B, we've got two possibilities. We can play the B here, 2nd fret of the A string, and then play the harmonics on the 4th fret which gives us, uh, again, a, a power chord, uh, root fifth octave. Uh, so that could be used over a B major or B minor. Or we could uh, get that exact same voice in by playing the B here, seventh fret of the E string, and playing the harmonics at the ninth fret of the, uh, of the D and G string. So they're both the same chord. So now we can play a basic major chord for each one of the natural notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Um, and some of these will work for minors, obviously, the add nines and the, uh, and the power chord versions. But uh, for now, we'll just stick with them uh, as major. Um, so if we go through them in order, C, D, E, F, 
G, E, and B. Come back to C. So just try messing around with these fretted note harmonic combinations and try coming up with your own sounds. Uh, as Jaco Pastorius showed with the portrait of Tracy way back in the 70s, these harmonic chords uh, can really transform the way that we create expressive music on the bass. Uh, and in recent years, people like Victor Wooten have shown how far that you can take this style. So just uh, listen to as many of these great players as you can and uh, try developing your own style. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel for updates on new videos each week. Also visit TalkingBass.net for more lessons and articles and subscribe to receive the free scale reference guide <laughs> full of uh, all kinds of scales for you to practice. Okay, see you later.